and far and wide at its north land and Himalaya. To the east, the Bay of Bengal. To the west, the Arabian Sea. And to the south, the Indian Ocean. Except for the island of Andaman, Nicobar, and Lakshadweep, the rest of the country is continuous. See our country in India. It is extended far and wide. There is a name also given in north. It is lies the Himalayas. All of you know the Himalayas and Himalayas lies in our India. It is in the north. To the east, it is the uh, to the Bay of Bengal. To the west, it is Arabian Sea, and to the south, the Indian Ocean. But except the island of Andaman. That is Nicobar and Lakshadweep. The rest of country is continuous. Most of the countries are people that live. We have to take into account this reason. His course refers to ancient India. When we study the ancient history of India, before 1947, today Pakistan and Bangladesh were also part of India. See, before 1947, that is uh, before we got the freedom, the Pakistan and Bangladesh. Nowadays it is the uh, separated. But before 1947, this uh, country and that is Pakistan, Bangladesh, also the part of India. But after 1947, they are separated. There is a some following reason is given already. We have mentioned here, and now we are going to uh, detail study about this topic. That is the first topic is our Himalayas. All of you know the Himalayas. It is the hilly region. There is a big mountain side there. And about that, now we are going to study the Hindu Kush and Himalaya ranges have created an impenetrable wall to, on the northern side of the India Indian subcontinent. See the Hindu Kush and Himalaya. There is the mountain, and there it is the ranges and uh, make the big wall on the northern side of the Indian subcontinent. This wall has separated the Indian subcontinent from the desert of Central Asia. See, because of this uh, Himalayas and Hindu Kush, there is a light uh, spread, and uh, they making the wall, and they are separated the our Indian subcontinent and Central Asia. There is a land route through the Khyber and Golan Passes in Hindu Kush mountain. See, there is the one land. Who is good? That means it is passing through the Khyber and Golan in uh, in the Hindu Kush mountain. In your textbook, there is one picture is also given. You can see how the Khyber is passed and uh, how it is looking nice also. The trade route from China passed through Central Asia and reached Arabia. It is known as Silk Route or Silk Route. There is a one route who is uh, which is the pass uh, from China. It from China pass to the Central Asia, and that route it is called the Silk Route or Silk Road. But why it is called the Silk Route or Silk Road? That answer is also given because the silk was the main commodity exported to the Western countries using this route. That means the silk from our country the silk uh, silk is exported, and for this that road is used. So that. It is called the Silk Route or Silk Road. Many foreign travelers also come to India by this route. That means this route is really famous as the one important that is the uh, commodity of silk is exported by this uh, route. Again, India uh, the travelers also travel from came India by this route. Then next the plains of the Sindhu Ganga Brahmaputra. Now we are talking about the Sindhu Ganga Brahmaputra. All of you know there are the rivers, and uh, about that now we are going to study. This region consists of the basins of three big rivers: Sindhu, Ganga, Brahmaputra, and their tributaries. This region extends from Sindhu Punjab in the west to the present-day Bangladesh in the east. See in this region there is basis of the three big rivers that is the Sindhu, Ganga, and Brahmaputra and their tributaries. All of you know there are very three all um, rivers are making there is the way three ways are going. It is called the uh, tributary. 
three rivers are making the land involving and one very path. It was in this region that the earliest senior civilization of Harappa and the later status and empires of ancient India emerged. See, uh, have you um, listened the name Harappa? There is a Harappa culture. When you, how many, many times we are actually uh, listen about this name? And here the one. It was in this uh, the earliest Indian civilization of Harappa and the later stages and empires of ancient India emerged. There is a Harappa Sanskriti, Harappa culture is also emerged in that region. The Thar region. Next topic of it is the Thar region. The Thar the Thar region spread across. There are you know about the desert, but now we are going to learn about the specific desert that is the Thar. And it is spread across Rajasthan, Haryana and some parts of Gujarat. See, uh, so much big. It is spread, it is the extended. It is in the Rajasthan, spread across the Rajasthan, Haryana and some parts of Gujarat. But a part of desert lies in today's Pakistan. See, the part of desert, it is lies in Pakistan. The desert has the Satluk river to its north, the Arvadic mountain ranges to, to its east, the run of Kutch to its south, and the Indus river to its west. See, Indus it is also called as Sindhu. Sindhu river name most of the known. But there is name also given on the that is Indus. Okay. And they are given about the that the desert has the Sadhguru river to its the north and the Arvari mountain ranges to its east. The ran of Kush to its the south. That means in all sides, in all uh, it is spread. Okay. The Khagar river that originates in Himachal Pradesh which is the Thar river. The Khagar river, have you uh, listened about the Khagar river? There is a river named Hagar and it is originated, that is it is coming from or it originated from the Himachal Pradesh and which is the Thar river. It goes in Rajasthan and Pakistan has now dried surface. Uh, which is the Thar river, it is known as Hakala in Pakistan. See that is in Pakistan it is known as the Hakala. Its course in Rajasthan and Pakistan has now dried up. Many sites of Harappa civilization are situated along the now dry course of the river. Harappa civilization uh, most of it is situated along the dry course of the river. They are only where Harappa civilization is situated. The decay like this. Now we are going to learn about decay like The region between the east and the west coast of India that was of to the south. This region has the Arabian Sea to its west, the Indian Ocean to its south, and the Bay of Bengal to its east. See, there is also that means actually we are learning about the history also and geography also. There is a all uh, cyclone in a where which or region is there, where it is spread, located. So we are indirectly study about the history plus geography. The river has the Arabian Sea to its west, Indian Ocean to its south, and Bay of Bengal to its east. A region thus bound by the sea on three sides is called the peninsula. See, this region is bounded by the sea. That means uh, uh, it is bounded, uh, it is surrounding. There is the sea, and so, see, on the three sides. So, it is called the peninsula. That is, here on the right is called the peninsula. Because the that reason is uh, bounded by the uh, sea by the three sides, so it is called the peninsula. A uh, major part of Indian peninsula is occupied by the Deccan Plateau. That is the major part of the Indian peninsula is occupied by the Deccan Plateau. The mountain ranges of Vidya and Satpura. Vidya and Satpura are located to north of the Deccan Plateau. The Sahara mountain ranges are to its own. Well, they are also known as the Western Ghats. See, uh, have you know about the Sayyadri Mountains? 
there is a mountains and lands and it is rented to the west so it is for it is also known as the western ghat because it is situated or uh, ranges in the west so that it is called the western ghat because there is so many ghats in sayadri mountain so they are given the name western ghat so the west of sayadri is coastal region of kokan and malabar the mountains on eastern side of the kent tagra are known as the eastern ghat see about you know now the western ghat there is a next uh, is given eastern ghat so the west of sayadri is the coastal region of kokan and malabar the mountains on eastern side of the kent tagra are known as western part it is known as western part this part it is known as eastern part and what is that the uh, the kent tagra is fertile land where many post harappa agrarian culture flourish the kent tagra was the part of maurya empire the largest in ancient india after the decline of the maurya empire to several other kingdoms and smaller empires continued to flourish in this region see uh, in ancient or the past harappa there is a uh, what is that the maurya empire that is maurya empire is uh, situated there it is the uh, empire maurya empire is there but after the decline of the maurya empire other kingdom also empire in that uh, region